Hi and welcome back to the channel for another live match. This one is at Tunnel Barn Farm for the Teams of Four Winter League. I've drawn House Peg 33. It's not a brilliant area. It's better early in the year when the water temperature is a bit higher, but it tends to get a bit difficult this time of year. This week they've put some stockies in there. Now knowing Tunnel Barn's stocking policy, they put little stockies in. So I've gone at it today to start with with fishing fishery micros and a four mil pro expander on the hook i'm fishing really light tackle o tens or clamps size 16 sfls and five jury slip elastic because i know most likely these stockies are going to be tiny hopefully i'll catch some like i said start on micros and expander it's been a maggot pool for a while now but now there's been some stockies got in there them reared on pellets so I feel that is the best option. Now a few anglers around me have all started by dobbing bread. I've gone straight in on the micros and expander. And I get off to a decent start while people are still messing about on bread. Trying to catch the, the better fish. Which aren't showing up. The only fish I'm seeing caught on the bread are roach. So I feel like I've got the decision right to start with. This peg is deeper to your left. Going back towards peg 29 and then shallower going up to your right. There's all little nooks and crannies in between the islands. You've got a gap in the island in front of you, and then you've got a gap to your right as well, which shallows up a bit. It's not the best area, like I say, normally, but you don't know what's gonna happen when these stock is coming. So I started on the pellet. It took me about five minutes to get my first bite, and then it was just a fisher chuck, basically. Stock is between an ounce and I'd say eight ounce. Six to eight ounce, maybe. Of course, I'm hoping that some of the original fish will come in and amongst them and have a go as well. But when the stock is about, I tend to race around the peg and all that, and everything else just backs off out, if there is any there anyway. That's what I'm guessing. These little fish running around like, like kids being around adults in the pub. You don't want it. So they just back off. My other plans for the peg are maggots everywhere else. I've only fed the one line with pellets, which is, like I say, it's nine and a half metres to my left, going into the deeper water to my left, up towards peg 32. And, yeah, look, some of these stockies are really small. Really small fish they are. But... Normally, when you're sitting on this peg, like in the previous two rounds, it hasn't been very good at all. At least I'm getting bites. I'm varying in size, like I say, between an ounce and eight ounce, but it's interesting. There's a very small one again. Right, my plans for the rest of the peg are maggots everywhere else. Obviously, I've set up a dobbing rig for around the islands if I need to. But with these stockies in here, it could potentially make the rest of the fish feed. Who knows? As you can see, I'm, I'm catching one a chuck of these stockies. And that five jury slip was perfect choice, I think. Absolute perfect choice for this style of fishing. I've been using it a lot on the silvers matches. I'm fishing in midweek at Isaac Walton's. And it's been bang on, to be fair. Since I filmed this video, I fished the third round of the Isaac Walton Silvers League. And I drew on middle peg 20. And all I've set up is five jury slips for everything. There's a lot of skimmers in there. There's some decent bream in there. There's a hell of a lot of carp in there. But like I say, it's a silvers league and I'm not fishing for the carp. Saying that, I caught 74 pounds of carp all on this five jury slip and now 10 bottoms. I lost a few as well, obviously. I got broke a few times, but I also had 26 pound of skimmers. So all in all, I had a great day's fishing all on five jury slip.
that won me the match, the silvers match. It won the cart match, and got me my one point. So I'm on three points going into round four, which is a brilliant start. Now, I've probably had about 40 or 50 minutes of fishing for these stockies. And I'm thinking, I should be able to catch these closer. So I'm plumbing a line here off a top kit at the side of the pallet. It's probably about five inches shallower than where I'm fishing out in the pool. It's going to be a throwaway line. Maybe I will catch there, maybe I won't. So I've just plumbed it up and I'm going to drop a bit of feed in there. And you never know. If I've got to catch stockies all day, I'd rather catch them quick. I'm just checking there to see, see if I can line it up with a marker before I put any feed in. It's one of the, like I say, it's one of them, it's a throwaway line. If it doesn't work, oh well. But it's got to be worth a try. So now I've got that fed, I'll go back to catching stockies out at nine and a half metres. I've got Paul Wheeler to my left on peg 31. And he's gone the same route as me, fishing for stockies, although he's fishing for them a bit longer. And where we are, he's on like a spit and it can be quite narrow. It's a bit wider where I am. So I could perhaps ship back to 13 metres before I got to break the pole down. Where Paul is, it's a bit narrow where he is. So he's having to double ship every fish he's hooking. You don't mind doing that when they're bigger fish, but when them fish of this size, quite small, you don't want to be messing about. You want to be in and out. And that's actually a mirror carp, that is. Obviously that's a stockfish. A that's a carp. <laughs> On the day, I caught five of those. And I reckon all five of them would only go about a pound and a quarter between them. Looking up around the pool, I feel I'm doing okay. I'm catching quicker than Paul is. Like I said, that's because he's double shipping. But it does seem that he's, the stamp of his fish are a little bit bigger than mine. And the chap opposite me, you can see there, that's peg four, that is. He's had some better stamp fish he has. Doing the same as me, fishing pellets, I think. I might be wrong, I think he's fishing pellets. But he's caught some of the resident F1s. So I feel like he's in front of me. But I'm doing well still. So I'm having a drop down now to see if I can catch him short. Just lining up again with my marker. Dropping it in. And I don't get a bite there. They've not come to it. I'll keep feeding it and see if they come at some point. But at the moment, they're not interested. Before I drop back out in the pellet, I'm going to have a quick look on the maggot short, see if I can catch anything there. I've plumbed up two track lines, well I say track lines, two short lines. I've plumbed one to my left where I'm fishing now and then one to the right in the shadow of this light conifer tree to my right. The little silver conifer tree. I think it's called a conifer, I don't know. Looks like a Christmas tree. I'm fishing into the shadow of that. So the only fish I hook on the maggot is a little perch. So we'll ditch that and we'll get back on the stockies. It was worth a look. I'm fishing a 4B16 F1 pellet float, the Preston F1 pellet, and I've got all my shot quite tight to the hook. When I say quite tight, it's a strung bulk of about an inch apart of number eights and, num and one number nine. The last one's a number nine. A four inch hook length, like I said, 010 and size 16 SFLB.
gets the bite down there quickly with the shot in so tight and as soon as i'm dropping it in it's going under and it's just a fisher chuck i mean look at that there's some of them are really small you'd never guess that was an f1 <laughs> tiny little fish i don't think he was quite an ounce Then you get one a little bit bigger. There you go. Just a little bit bigger. But that five jury slips working a treat. Means you can throw the pole back, give it a couple of strips, and the fish are in. And it's solid. Stockier chuck. And I can't understand why I couldn't catch them on a top kit, to be fair. Stamper. As quick as I can get out there, I'm catching a fish. And some of them are half bad. Look, that's a decent one. You wouldn't mind catching one of them a chuck, you'd put a right weight together. God knows how you're supposed to figure out what when you've got fifty pounds in your net though, if you do it all day. Because there is a fifty pound net limit on tunnel barn. I don't know how you click for these, especially when a lot of them are this small or smaller. Right, I'm going to have another quick look on that top kit line because I'm convinced I'll catch some fish there. I've been feeding it for another 15, 20 minutes while I'm fishing out. <laughs> Drop some feeding, line up with my marker, and then... Oh, well, that's the way to do it. Let's see what happens. Baz Bird, one of my mates, is on peg one. Awesome you are. And we've been having banter all day. You won't have him. Had a right yeah, laugh yeah. with him. There we go, there's a fish. I knew I'd catch some up there. And it seems a bit bigger, this one. Still a stocky, but one of the better stamp ones. Bigger as well. Not much bigger, but bigger nonetheless. But it wasn't solid down there. Not like it was out at nine and a half metres. So like every time I went in after that point, I'd have a fish. But I felt I was wasting time on it because I wasn't catching many fish there. I went on it a few times and I caught the odd fish there, but it wasn't very good. I had to keep going back out to my main line and that was where I got most of my bites. One a chuck. Right, so we're two hours in now, and I've got fed up of catching them. I want to try and catch some bigger stamp fish, some of the original F1s. So I'm going to leave that line out blowing a bit and go and have a look between the islands and see if I can start catching some resident F1s, some of the bigger ones. There are some decent ones in here. There's lots of them over a pound, and then up to three and four pounds, so... Hopefully we can catch a few of those. So I've gone out to 11 metres between the islands, just slightly to the right of the, there's a basket out there or a little box or something. And I've gone slightly to the right of that, just short of it, where it's a little bit deeper. And see if I can catch some fish there. The rig I'm using on this one is a 4x12 uh, F1 maggot. I missed a bite there. Something there, it could have been a silver, I don't know. We'll try again, we'll give it another feed. Yeah, it's a 4x12. 
Again, it's an 010 hook length with a size 16 SFL. I'm putting about six to eight maggots in the pot. Just giving a little squeeze of grain bait down that side where I've been feeding them pellets. See if I can get them stockies to come in. Shipping back out. On these rigs, I'm using nine Dura Slip. Because like I said, I want to be catching the bigger fish on these maggot rigs. So I think nine Dura Slip will be adequate. Tapping the maggots out, laying the rig in, and just sitting waiting for an indication. And the first fish I get it shows what that bite I miss was. It was potentially a, a roach or a perch. There you go, little perch. Give it another go. Pinch of maggots in the pot, two maggots on the hook. Well, I've hooked through the pointy end of the maggot so as it leaves more hook exposed. Drop the bait in, lay the rig out. Keep a few maggots going in on those short lines. And I've fed a line down to my right, down the edge as well. And there we go. There's my first decent F1. Worth a few stockies, one of these are. He wants to go and swim up the island by the looks of it. That nine euro slip's perfect for these, especially this time of year when they're starting to slow down a bit. There you go. He's in the cheekies, he's not actually in the mouth. He was close. He was looking at it, wasn't he? The good thing about using these lighter elastics as well is you've got more chance of getting foul up fish out. Normally when you hook an F1 in the side or in a scale or summer, the thicker the elastic or the heavier the elastic, the more chance you've got of ripping that hook out. So a lighter elastic will help you to get those foul up fish out. You don't want to be hooking foul up fish in the first place, but sometimes you just can't help it. And anything I hook, I want to put in a spray bag. Drop it in again. Laying the rig out. And we're in again. Happy days. This one tried to get around the other side of the island. I got a feeling this is fair looked. He's hooked in the gullies. That's two fair look fish in two chucks. So I'm going to drop the plummet on again just to make sure that I've got it plumbed up right before I start looking for shallower water. Sometimes when you're fair looking up, 
you're just fishing in too deep of water for them. By moving somewhere in the peg where it's a little bit shallower, like that there is a float length shallower there within four foot. So it looks like where I'm fishing there's a bit of an hole because it's shallower there as well. Have a quick plumb around the island. That's shallower there. To find the same kind of depth, I've got to move her all the way around to my right a bit. Bit shallower there. And there, that's where I can find a similar kind of depth to where I'm fishing. Looking back on it, I should have been looking at those shallower lines maybe. Just using tyre marker crayon there to mark the distance on my pole so I can get back to the exact spot every time when I ship out. Ouch. Pulling me back shot a bit closer to the float there. Slip on a couple of reds. Through the point. Few in the pot. And we're going to have another look on that line. Just dunk in the pot there to make sure the maggots don't get bounced out the pot while I'm shipping out. Make some stick to the pot a bit more. I'm going to drop a bit of feed in there. Put a few more maggots in the pot this time so as I can feed two lines. Feed that line, get it primed up. Drop the rest of the maggots on this line. Lay the rig out. And bang, another fish. Fail looked again. That's three and three chucks of fail look there now. What's going on? Luckily, I got the first two out. Wasn't so lucky with that one. The fish are obviously coming to the feed. And I've just not figured out how to catch them properly yet. It might be just a case I'm going to have to move and find that shallower water. Tap a few on that line again, on my mark, and then out to 11 metres. Keeping my other lines primed up. No bites there, so we'll drop on that line that I've been priming. Make sure I've got my hand on the mark. And while it's settling, it goes straight down the hole and I've fail looked another fish. I must have laid the rig across him as it was going in. It doesn't stay on long. He's off. Annoying. What am I doing wrong? So that's the last four fish I've hooked have been fail hooked. I've got two of them out and two of them have done me. I'm not a happy bunny at the minute.
I've definitely not figured out what to do yet. It's clear these fish are coming to the maggots. I've just not sorted out how to catch them yet. No more bites on this line. No more indications on this line, I should say. Mm. So we'll drop a few more maggots in. And we'll get out to the 11 meter line again. And into a fish again. And at long last, I've got one in the mouth. There you go. Perfectly in the top lip. Hopefully they've settled there now instead of being scatty. But no, here's another fail looker. I've clearly not sorted this out. And this one's in the tail. or in the tail region. But as long as it comes out, I'm not bothered. Just gotta take my time. Don't want to risk ripping that rock out. You can see Paul's pole to my left there. You can see he's fishing quite far out to catch those stockies and he's still catching them quite steady. There you go, he's got another one, look. Wasn't very big fish, but he had loads. I stopped catching them when I got up to 70 and tried to catch other fish. He carried on catching them. So me trying to stab at it there and missing. Obviously it's in his tail, so I've got to try and get the net under him and let him swim into it. Shot in the dark again and got him. 
There you go, look, right by his tail. Don't care, he's in the net. And have a quick look on my short line again and see if there's anything turned up on that. I want to figure out what I'm going to do over there. Because I can't keep going on fair looking fish. I need to do something about it. And I get a bite, but again, it's a stocky. Very small stocky. How small that is. That's a little F1, that is. Tiny little fish. I don't want to be catching these now more. I feel like there's enough big fish here for me to catch. I'll have a drop in on the right hand side where I've been feeding as well. See if there's any better fish there. I'll keep feed going in on both lines, hoping that some resident F1s will turn up at some point. There we go, there's a better fish. Not much better, it's still a stocky, eh? but it's a bit bigger. Close to eight times, maybe. That shop hoppers at me there. I thought he was absolutely empty, it to be fair. He seemed to be catching a lot of decent stamp fish. Talk to him after he'd also lost a few of them. So maybe I hadn't seen the ones that he got out. I'd seen him playing fish and not realised that he was losing some of them. I just thought he was miles in front of me. Another stocky. Now I'm going to drop a plummet on. I've had a think about it and I'm going to go and find some shallower water over there. I know it's shallower to the left of that basket. So I'm going to plumb that side of it. It's probably about six inches shallower than where I was fishing. Hopefully the fish want to be in that kind of depth. Just make sure I get it bang on with the plumbing. Happy with that, so we'll get the pot on and we'll have a look over there. Two maggots on the hook again. Again, it's the 4B12 F1 maggot this is. Pretty strong out this is, so as I can watch the rig go through the water. Pot on. Six to ten in the pot. See if I can go and fair look a few less fish this side. Now I'm going to lay this rig in to the right because it does start shelving up towards that island to my left. So I was, I'm laying it in so as it will rest against that shelf. It's not much, but it's enough to make me want to let the rig fall from the right to the left. I 
and it's not in there too long. I know I can F1. And guess what? It's not fail locked. Lovely. Perfectly up this time. What do you reckon you got now? I'll try that again. Hey? Oh, you've had one proper enough, yeah? Keep my other lines primed. Hopefully they'll turn up on these lines before we finish. And back out to 13 metres. Tap my maggots out. Now it's settled. And it's in there a matter of seconds and we're into another fish. I'm beginning to think, why didn't I plumb here a little earlier? The difference of like five, six inches has been massive. And I'm not fair looking anything here. Everything's being hooked in the mouth. Clearly a few fish here. Now look perfectly in the top lip again. And another one straight away. This one feels a little better. There you go. Hooked in the mouth again. Flying now. And again, it's not in there long.
It's the bite there, look. Starting to feed a few maggots over to that reeds now. It's even shallower there. Hopefully I'll catch some fish there. It's not too long. Look, I've gone back into a fish again. I'm having a real good run on this line. Why didn't I plumb this up earlier? And everyone's in the mouth. Hook perfectly. Everyone in their mouth, look. Decent stamp fish as well. Much better than catching these stockies. Fantastic. See how well this nine jury slips working for these. Decent fish as well, that. Sun's moved round a bit now. I can't see what I'm doing. So I've had to put my hand over the side of my face to shield it from the sun so I could see what I'm doing. I'm not saluting anybody. <laughs> It's helped me to see that bite. Real good run on this line. I've had a real good run on this line. All decent F1s as well. He's a lively one. Very lively fish. Settle down a bit now, look now. Here he is. You just swore he was fair looked. Real consistent line this has been. But the stamp is starting to decrease. Still worth catching now, look.
great fishing. What a chuck. Well, like I said, the stamp is decreasing. This one's quite small. In comparison, anyway. One of the bigger stock is that one. Might be time to give that line a rest. Have a quick look on the short lines again. I can figure out which one I'm using. Yeah, I can't make my mind up what I'm doing here. I thought about dropping some maggots in. But I'm catapulting over there anyway. I don't know what I was doing, to be honest. <laughs> I've slept a few times since I fished it. <laughs> So I'll continue to just feed it with a catapult while I'm having a look on these short lines. Now bites there. That line wasn't very good at all. I think I had one perch and one little tiny stocky off it. One of the really small stockies. That was the only two fish I caught on that line all day. This line to my right was much better. Some slightly better stock is early on and then the stamp did increase a bit later on towards the end. Bang, there's a fish. That's a bit better. That nine jury slips beautiful. Be nice to have a good run on this line now to finish up. Quite light in the match now. Keeping a few maggots going in out there. In case I've got to go back over there. Bang, there's another one. Somebody commented on one of my videos saying, you need to get somebody to film your float for you. I think you could see it perfectly then, couldn't you? Get in there, another half decent fish. Cracking. Just them two fish off that line, so I back over to the island and I'm straight into a fish again. I thought it was a smaller F1. Okay. 
they end up being a perch. Not too bad a stamp, I suppose. So I'm getting back off that line again. I'm going to have a look down that right hand edge where I've been throwing those maggots. It's probably just over two feet deep there. Not expecting to catch much there, but anything will be a bonus. We'll have a look. You never know. Straight into a fish look. Throw a few more maggots there. Get the next one lined up. Not a massive fish. But he'll do. We're in again. What a flying last hour and a half. Once I sorted out the depths out there, got in the right place, I felt. Over by that island. Stop fair looking fish. Everything I hooked was in the mouth. Pity I never sorted it out a little bit earlier. But still, got there in the end. See if there's any more fish on this short line before we wrap up. Straight back into another fish. Like I said, I've had a flying last hour and a half. Mind you, I had a good first two hours as well, catching those stockies. What a chuck. Got up to 70 fish, but I felt I needed to catch some of the bigger fish to compete. And once I got it right over, I had a really good run of fish out there. This right hand track line, I could, you could call it. This right hand short line has been really good. The left hand one was a waste of time. Like I said, I had two little fish off it, little tiny stock in a perch. But this line, although I haven't been able to catch loads off it, I've had two or three fish off it every time I've dropped on it in the last hour. A couple of fish down the right hand edge. And that's it, that's your lot, that's the all out. Cracking days fishing in the end, considering it's not normally a good peg. Having those stockies put in this week has definitely helped the peg a feel. Chap on 29's weighed 53 pound. 
I don't think he caught any stockies. I think he's just fished for the resident fish. Paul Wheeler to my left on peg 31. He must have had 120, 130 fish. And they went 52 pound. A nice busy day's fishing for him. I don't think he caught many resident F1s. But he's had a bite of chuck virtually. The my two nets went 58 pound and some ounces. So coming off those stockies and going for the resident fish has definitely been the right thing to do. Like I say, it's not the best peg on the pool. Far from it, in fact. But I've ended up finishing fourth on the lake. And fourth in the big section uh, that's split between house and canal. So I'm over the moon with that. And we finally got our league off to a good start. Mm. Well, I say good start. We're three rounds in. We had two poor first rounds, but we've had a great day today. We've got Cannon that's won the match. Lloyd has won his lake. I'm fourth on my lake and Steve Lovell's fourth on his lake. So a really good return. But surprisingly, we never won it on the day. We had 58 points and the lads from Dynamite ended up with 59 points to win the day. So we ended up second. We're not complaining at that. Good days fishing. And we finally got our league off to a start. Up to six in the league now after those two poor first rounds. So hopefully we can kick on from here. Now if you enjoyed watching that, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more like this, then please subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.